Hey people, thank you for stopping by Building Wealth with Daji. Here's my chat with Steve. Steve is a self-made millionaire. He's based in Canada. He's financially independent. That is, he does not depend on his day job for his monthly household expenses. His two main sources of income is crypto mining and selling covered calls. In this interview, we decode how to be a successful crypto miner and how to earn money selling covered calls. I hope this interview helps you through your financial journey. Please do comment what you think about this interview, share with your friends, and follow my channel. I was a millionaire at 39 years old. It was growing really nicely, and then COVID took it from me. Okay. And then I lost my job. And then the stock market was crashing, obviously, because I lost the millionaire status. I couldn't find work. Bills were coming due. It was very difficult. And at that time, I wasn't crypto mining. And I didn't have any crypto staking. All I had was my rental property and some dividends that at the time of the crash of 2020, they thought dividends were going to get cut. If you remember that, things got so dire, they thought dividends were going to get cut. And so that started to get priced into a lot of the assets. And so I was getting really desperate. And it was a very difficult time for me. But with what my colleague had previously told me, this is a great time to buy you won't see this again until the next pandemic or next you know, century crisis. It seems to happen every 10 years. So, uh, but because I was 42 at the time, I've been through this before, I've seen it. I thought this is a really good chance for me to take a bet. It was a calculated bet. Took out an uncomfortable amount of money against my house and went long and it paid off huge it didn't take long and um, you got back over the the hump over over a million dollars it starts taking off i started getting into crypto mining while i was working from home that took off too like i remember in december of 2020 my goal for crypto mining that month was to make 600 dollars. that was my goal just wanted to make 600 bucks and it ended up being 666 dollars and it's got that evil ring Mm. So, you know, a superstition number to it, and I'll never forget it. And that was partly because the prices started to go up a little bit. Back then, Ethereum was about $800. And then into the summer, or sorry, the winter of 2021, the price took off just like a rocket. And I was still building mining rigs and it continued to do better and better and then i think it was it february or march of 2021 i made 8500 dollars in one month just on mining ethereum it was absolutely fantastic and then that's when i was like i think i got something here kept on building finished off the mining rigs the stocks had grown to a point where i was like all right let's start to spend some income off this and so started doing covered calls on the index positions that i had Okay. So, so what I'm understanding from you, Steve, is that crypto mining is the one which is pivotal to your financial independence. Yeah. And it's also my biggest risk and it is what holds me back a little bit. Yeah. That's a great question. And thank you for bringing that up. Cause I, I do get that a little bit. It's like, well, if you are, uh, if you're a millionaire, if you have this passive income, that's so strong, why are you continuing to work? One, I am self-employed. I don't have a W-2 slip as in the States or a T-4 slip as in Canada. So I'm already self-employed. I work when I want to or not when I don't want to. I do like to work though. And I am in my prime earning years. I'm 44 years old. So I do kind of hesitate where it's like, well, like I do get paid really well already to do the work that I do. It's not particularly difficult. I'm good at it rinse and repeat, I can make a good money off of it. So are you sure you want to give that up? But more importantly, I'm reliant on that Ethereum mining income. And for your listeners and viewers that are uh, knowledgeable with crypto mining, uh, Ethereum is going proof of stake by June or July. I actually have a thread prepped, ready to go for tomorrow morning on Twitter explaining ethereum 2.0 and proof of stake they just passed a very huge milestone for testing they were able to in one of their test nets um, prove that they could migrate to the proof of stake so with ethereum they have the main net 
but they also have four test nets. And then on each test net, they run a battery of tests to see if things work out. And on their main test net for uh, the proof of stake blockchain, they were able to merge that with the proof of work blockchain and the two merge perfectly together. So it was a huge green light for what they're trying to accomplish there. So I'm at risk with my mining uh, passive income there for sure. So, so, then, so and the next natural question is, what do you do after that? Yeah. Sorry. No, no. So I'm just trying to understand. So let's say, uh, you mind talking about uh, monthly, what's the total sum of passive income you have? It's about 6,000. Yeah, 5, it's actually... <laughs> It's actually going down each month because of uh, Ethereum mining revenue. Uh, it's two factors play into mining revenue for a crypto miner. One, the network difficulty, and then two, the crypto price. So as you know, the crypto, so Ethereum price has been declining over the last three months. It was at $4,800. Now it's down to, it was below 3,000. It's now back up to 3,000. So that plays a large part in how much money I can make. I make about one and a half Ethereum a month. But then, so that you can kind of play the math out on that. But then network difficulty has been climbing so high that I'm actually finding it very difficult to even make one Ether mm -hmm. every month. So the two have really hit me hard where it's been difficult to make an ether. Okay. And then the price of that one ether is been dropping over the last three months. Like November 8th was the peak. That was like the last good touch of really good crypto price for, for, for Ethereum. So, and then as we head towards the shift to proof of stake, and then they're going to shut off Ethereum mining. That's very difficult for myself. So the next question is, well, what do you do about that? Yeah, well, yeah. there are, and I get it every single day. In fact, it's a failure on wow. social media if I don't get asked every single day, what do you do after Ethereum yeah, is yeah. state? Because it's a, it's a prominent question. So if you look uh, online and say, hey, this is the GPU that I have. Let's say it's a NVIDIA 3090, NVIDIA 3080. It'll tell you how many coins that GPU can mine. And it's about 355 on each one of them. So there are 335, sorry, 355 other coins that we can mine. Yes, they won't be as profitable, but we'll still be able to spend and make some money. So the, the quick answer to your question is I will move over and mine other coins. What coins? Uh, so other ones you can do are, so Ethereum Classic is a terrific coin. That's been making a really good move over the last, uh, I think, seven or 10 days. It's gone up almost 100%. Uh, Raven Coin is another coin that is terrific for mining. Flux is another option. Firo, Ciro, Ergo. I mean, there's... It's a long, long laundry list of, of coins that you can mine. So would it still be called Ethereum mining or it will be? Look, I don't no, know. No, it would just be like, it would just be called, you would call it uh, cryptocurrency mining, GPU mining. mining. Yeah. And so you, and you can switch to... it. Yeah. No, you can switch on. it too. So you could be like, I'm doing like Firo today. Then tomorrow I'm going to do Ergo. Then tomorrow I'm going to do Flux. And what you do is after you've mined the coin, you just convert it and sell it into USD or USDT. So US dollar. So look, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I, I'm fascinated by mining. But I, know, I know pretty much zero about how to mine. Now, for people who want to mine and who want to generate certain income with mining, what equipments do they need? I mean, what, what is yeah. the way to get started? Yeah, that's another. So there's two questions I answer every day. What do you do after Ethereum moves to proof of stake? Mm. I want to get started mining. And what do you do when a covered call gets assigned to you? That's mm -hmm. like the three questions I get every mm -hmm. single day. Mm 
And it, it's good. And I appreciate it because it gives me ideas for content mm. for Twitter and mm. for Instagram and a blog post. I do all three. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, If you so if you go on my Twitter account, which is Stephen Wealthy underscore, mm. off my profile, I have a link tree with free guides. So all of your viewers can go on there and see mm. I have a free guide. I don't even ask for your email. Like I'm not, hey, I want your email, I want your contact, mm. I want like your credit card for like you know 30 or 60 days. No. Like, seriously, you go on there, you click my link tree, you click my beginner's guide, you get the PDF ebook for free. It is yours. You can take it. It's been downloaded like 17,000 times already. In that guide, it steps you through how to set up a gaming PC for crypto mining. So my recommendation for anyone who wants to get started is if you already have a gaming PC, there is a really good chance that it is strong enough to mine cryptocurrencies already. If that's the case, you haven't put any money into this. You downloaded my guide for free. You got your gaming PC. You already sunk the cost into that. Spin it up and get it mining cryptocurrency. All it needs is the GPU inside your computer. And you can be making three, four, five bucks a day. Now I know that's not a lot. It's not going to change your life, but you know, three to four or five bucks a day, US, on something that you've already spent money on, and you didn't pay any money for my guide. It sure as hell is better than nothing. Yeah. You multiply that out throughout the month. That's one hundred fifty dollars US. That's a night out. That's uh, can cover some of your mortgage payment. That can cover some of your property taxes. You know, maybe that can offset the interest on a rental property. There's a lot of ways in which you can play this. And that's just with one GPU in one gaming computer. And as you go forward, what will happen is you'll think of ways of, okay, well, how can I make this more? Because as people, once you get a taste of something and it's good and you like it and it tastes yummy, you want to have it just a little bit more. And so you say, well, how can I make it, let's say, seven bucks a day? How can I make it 10 bucks a day? And the beauty with GPU mining and crypto mining is it's very linear in how it scales. So it's not like, uh, so what I'm trying to say is all you have to do is start buying more GPUs and adding to your gaming rig. And then after that, you're going to want to build a mining rig. And a mining rig is just a, the way they lay out the computer in such a way that you have eight GPUs all lined up like a toaster. And it just efficiently cools them all at the same time while it runs the mining algorithm. To build uh, that mining rig, I also have a free guide for that as well too. So if you go off my Twitter profile, again, you don't have to give me your email. I don't even care. Download the ebook. It's totally free. Like these are these ebooks are 40, 50 pages long. Like I really go into mm -hmm. detail. I give you step by step instructions mm -hmm. how to build the mining rig how to set up your gaming PC so that it can uh, in mine cryptocurrencies. So you need a, cool you need story. a lot of technical knowledge for this? Or, or yeah, the, there is a bit of a barrier entry. So I have got some DMs, direct messages from people who have said, I'm not very technical savvy. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to wire a computer together. Do you recommend that I do this? And because I don't get any direct money from it, I usually tell them, no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Um, so I would say if you've ever built a computer, if you've ever upgraded your computer, like, you know, replaced a card, put a new card in, replace a drive. So you take your old hard drive out, you put in an SSD. Those are kind of the, the skills you're going to need. Uh, some of the if you're motivated and you're like, oh, no, I really want to learn this, then yes. But yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of a learning curve to it. It's not the easiest thing out there. You can learn it off YouTube. You don't need a university degree to do this. Um, but I've helped 45 people through direct messages on Twitter start mining. 
And I can tell I got a really good sense. I can tell right away if the person's going to have some problems or not, if they're going to run into some issues. Um, and so you can just tell just by the questions that they're asking, right? If it's pretty obvious or it's a complicated question or if it's a good question type of thing. And it's nothing against them. It's just, uh, I can tell pretty quick. So, and I would just, so getting back to your original question, I would just say, if you've built a computer, if you've ever upgraded a computer, you're probably a good candidate. If you always buy a Dell or an HP laptop or desktop, and then if anything goes wrong, you're like, no, I'm taking this in. I don't want to deal with this. I'll pay tech support to come and deal with this. You're probably, it's probably not a good fit for you. If you're a hands-on computer guy, you're, yeah, you're good to go. You're good to go. Okay. So what I'm very sure that it's not for me. <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not a very technology guy. But and, a lot of tech- and the, and the, so the beauty is, uh, okay, so I've narrowed in on this niche. This is kind of my forte. This is my specialty. Yeah. I love it. Like, okay. it's a lot of fun too. Okay. We got that. So for a guy like yourself, who's like, eh, I don't know, man, you got your GP, you know, you go do your own thing. Okay. So, but there's other incredible opportunities out there in the crypto space. Now I want to steer away from, so, so one project that I think is extremely promising. So first, Ethereum is going proof of stake. It's an incredible blockchain. It runs cryptocurrencies. Like if you take off Bitcoin as a store of value and it's cryptocurrency, best form of money out there. Okay, yeah, let's put Bitcoin to the side. Next is Ethereum. It runs the crypto currency space like usdt usdc all these erc20 tokens nfts they're all run on ethereum yeah okay so let's put that to the side now after that it's solana it's an incredible blockchain as well too it's where ethereum wants to go you can stake solana and if you're outside of the united states you can stake Solana very easily on Binance and get 9, 11, and 13% on your Solana. So you can make incredible passive income just on that. And you don't have to have any hardware knowledge or anything. You just buy the token, stake the token, and you get paid daily, daily. You don't have to wait a week, you don't have to wait a month. It's every single day you get paid. I think there's a staking on USDT is also pretty good, right? I was I was yep, hearing yep. about 20, 20 percent, eighteen percent. If they're paying on, are these are these reliable? Schemes? Anchor I mean, Anchor Portal a- Anchor Portal. Yeah, Anchor Portal is going to percent. So, are these reliable? Do you think these is? I mean, I, I, look, I, I that's my hesi- that's my hesitation with this whole. That's that's my blocker as well. That's what keeps me like mm, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I share the same concern. That's why I'm like, well, I know GPU mining works. I know that I'm providing a service. I'm mm. helping to manage, sorry, I'm helping to run and secure the blockchain for Ethereum. And that's a value add service. And so therefore they pay me in Ethereum to do this. I get it. And so mm. then I can take that Ethereum and I can sell it. Like, it makes, it makes logical mm. sense in my head. Mm. Mm. Whereas these other blockchains, I'm like, Oh, come on. Like there's 15,000 of these things. Like there has to be some scams in there, but some guys will say, yeah, I understand the risks that it's super high risk, but I'll take $10,000. I'll put a thousand dollars onto 10 of these projects that are yielding insane amounts. And I know two or three of them are going to go bust. Seven of them uh, won't. I'll make, tremendous money on the seven or maybe the five and it'll more than compensate for the ponzi schemes or the rug pulls that i get pulled underneath me so i'm so i'm with you i i but that's the play that i hear is people are like well i'll go on i'll diversify no because you see uh i have i have lent out some ethereum myself uh to xc infinity guys there are you know there are teams xc infinity the games they play and and I'm getting some money out of that, which is a couple of hundred dollars. And of late, uh, I just wanted to try it out. I've, I've done that, but yeah, uh, I mean, it's been less than what I thought. But but it's fine. I mean, it's for me trial. But it's for Anchor Protocol. 
20%, I just think that whether it's sustainable for anybody to pay you 20%. You know, so, that's, okay. that's a lot of so money, one, right? Yeah, no. So one thing to keep in mind too is, okay, so let, let, let's take that Ethereum sample a little further. When it moves to staking, so the rewards are going to go, are going to be between 10 and 15% for the stakers. Yeah. Some will think that's unrealistic or unsustainable, but here, here's the catch. So Ethereum and some of these other blockchains are, you are the infrastructure for that, essentially that company or for that blockchain. And they're making incredible money off of it. And so for them to pay you 10 to 15% of their revenue, it, it's nothing to be too scared of. Some of them that are like, when it's like into the 100, 200, 300 thousands percent, it's like, okay, well, that's not sustainable. Like the thing can't, there's no way it can, can generate and continue to make that kind of a money. There's got to be some laundering or some Ponzi type thing going on there. But I, I don't, I think anything up to that 20% is sustainable if it's decentralized and you are providing a service to them, if you're helping them out. So with Ethereum, you're helping them run the blockchain. And that blockchain has incredible business value in terms of Ether, all the tokens that are on it. Like SHIB. SHIB, for example, runs on Ethereum. So all the SHIB guys out there, it's like, well, Ethereum, you better keep on doing a really good job and running really well because we are an ERC-20 token. So in terms of you know, capabilities, the hard skills, I've understood from you for crypto mining, the hard skills, what kind of hard skills you need. Now, in, in terms of investments, uh, so let's say if you want to generate $4,000 a month using crypto mining, I'm talking about the uh, direct investment in terms of money. So how much investment is there? I just want to think in terms of the ROI. For, this is for crypto mining? Crypto mining. I'm just talking about crypto mining. Yeah, program. so easy. Yeah, no, I've run the number so many different times. It's not even funny. So with crypto mining, you're looking at, uh, 100 to 130 percent per year. Now I know, uh, taking in light of what we just talked about with 20 percent, so that's that's an upfront cost. So you're 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 spending between six, eight, or ten thousand dollars to get a mining rig up and running. Okay. And your goal your goal is to get that money back as soon as possible. So okay. I spent ten thousand dollars on a mining rig. I want that 10,000 bucks back to me as, as soon as possible. I want it back within six to nine months. I can tolerate a year. So that's my 100% return. Okay. So, so okay. I'm, I'm just so, trying to do numbers, uh, Steve, alongside you. So if I want to earn $30,000 a year on crypto mining, my investment would probably be around 30,000. That's what. Okay. So you want, is. you said you, you said you want four thousand dollars a month. Yeah, so about fifty thousand dollars a year if I want to earn on crypto mining. So then, forty-eight thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So you're going to probably spend. Uh, do you really want to get into this? I can I can break it down for you. No, no, I'm, I'm right recording. Now. I'm recording it for the viewers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I can. Okay, just let me. If you can give me some time, I can break this out. So right now. You're gonna make four dollars for every one hundred mega hash every day. So four. So four times thirty. So a hundred dollar, hundred and twenty dollars per mega hash. Four thousand. So you need you need. 3.3 giga hash divided by 90. So you're going to need about 33 to 35 GPUs on that. And each one of those, let's go, let's go 34. And each one of those is going to cost you $1,400. 
we're talking MSRP here. So that's forty-seven thousand dollars, and then thirty-four divided by six. So you're going to need six rigs. So call it fifty-five thousand dollars. And so if I invest fifty-five thousand dollars today, then a yearly I can get forty-eight thousand. But that's a recurring yeah. income, right? Some day, yeah. some year it will be forty-eight. Yeah. Some day it will be forty. Some day for seventy. So, so yeah. for pe- for people like me, Steve, uh, I may not be able to do it myself. But if I have certain capital to invest, I can set up a few rigs myself. Right? If I have two hundred thousand dollars to invest, I can set up some and get some people to manage for me. Right? And uh, it, it yeah, you know, you know, you're not the f- yeah. I know what you're saying you're not the first person who has approached me with that idea, mm. where I could rent out hash rate, sell hash rate. Mm. sell uh, rigs to them, build them and sell them for a profit or build them, bring them to their location, set them up and remote manage them for them. Mm. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm definitely looking into where I could just like, be, be, as a miner, there are limitations that you start running up against. So I can only run so many in each location. Okay. Right? Like I, I have to manage the cooling. I have to manage the electrical load. Mm. And so if somebody came to me and said, hey, I have a really cheap electrical rate here. I'm at five cents a kilowatt hour. Why don't you make a rig and bring it here? Or multiple would be better. And we could set up an operation. Done, man. Like it, it, the, the problem then becomes, okay, we got to find hardware. That's what's difficult right now. The supply chain is so difficult. Okay. So if, if you if you said to me I have two hundred thousand dollars to invest in GPU mining rigs, our limitation is not that you have two hundred thousand dollars. Our limitation is it's going to take me a long time to find MSRP GPUs for two hundred thousand dollars because uh, like that's two hundred thousand dollars divided by fifteen divided by fifteen hundred. Let's say. So I need to get 130, 133 GPUs. It's going to take a long time to get. Okay. Because I'm buying, okay. I'm buying them ones and twos at a time. I got to, I got to phone a manufacturer to try and get that. So it's, oh, it's a great question. It's a good mental kind of challenge. Mm. Uh, but you're not the first one to say, "Hey, man, why don't we set up an operation?" For sure, mm. I love it. Yeah. No, uh, I think, and your legality, is it legal to have these crypto mining operations at your home or, you know, is, it, is, there, is there some government issue? Because all of a sudden, then crypto is so, fantastic, but it's not regulated yet. Yeah, no, and it, that's, it's, so hard to, it's so hard to answer. All I can say is where I am, it's legal. Okay. There's no limitation on, on what I can do here. But I can't say blanket statement. It is legal because I'm sure there are some jurisdictions. I think like New York City and the New York State, they're having some issues with it. They're trying to pass laws where they would make it illegal to mine Bitcoin and other mm. cryptocurrencies. So it, it's difficult to say yes or no blanket. All I can say is where I am, it is legal. I can do it here. Okay. No, awesome. I think it makes sense. No. I think another 10 minutes, I'll take another let you go, Steve. I, I mean, I'm sure. kind of getting interested in your, in your journey. So uh, crypto mining is one thing. Now, another, what is the second biggest source of income for you? Is it covered calls? Co- uh, covered, covered calls for sure. And yeah. what do you do covered calls on? Uh, my, my baby is QQQ. That, okay. I love running it against that baby. And, so and- for those that don't know, QQQ is an ETF. Uh, it's just like SPY or SPY. Uh, SPY is the S&P 500. QQQ is the largest 100 stocks in the NASDAQ, 100, in the NASDAQ stock exchange. Mm-hmm. It's the NASDAQ 100 index. Mm-hmm. And what that index is, is the largest by capital weight, um, by market cap in the NASDAQ uh, stock exchange. And they've taken away the financial firms from that index. And so naturally what ends up happening is very tech heavy, but it's not tech only. We have a lot of- uh, So for uh, example, we we include- Sorry? You have bought a lot of QQQ. Yeah, it's an uncomfortable amount. Yeah. It's an unnatural amount. 
no man deserves as much QQQ. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Or needs as much QQQ either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think let's just talk about the covered calls a bit, Steve. Sorry, I interrupted you. For sure. You wanted to say something? Did I interrupt your thought? No. Nope. I just, I, so why am I so bullish on QQQ? I think if you look at the, the headwinds and what challenges the U.S. economy and to, to a lesser extent, the world economy, the answers lie within the companies that are within that index. So who's going to beat inflation? Who's going to automate? Who's going to innovate? Who's got the balance sheets to get us through this tough time that we have, have, have ahead of us? It's going to be those companies. If you talk to somebody and say, hey, what's your favorite stock? Or what are your top favorite five stocks? It's all there. If they list them all out, four out of the five will be in the NASDAQ 100. And yeah. it's like, well, then... Like they'll say Tesla, they'll say Amazon, they'll say Microsoft, they'll say Apple. They'll, it's like a crowd or Facebook. Crowd it's, it's like, well, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like, well, just go buy the QQQ. Yeah, and then yeah. you have all at once, you got all the best companies that you're talking about. And yeah. I'm not trying to pump tires here, but like, it's like, these guys are going to make inflation go away because they have to grow. Innovation. The US economy has to grow. Yeah to get out of inflation yeah. coupled with the lower interest or higher interest rates. And we need more automation. We need more electric vehicles to deal with pollution. And these are the companies that are going to be the path forward for the U S economy mm -hmm. and also therefore assist with the world economy. And I'm not American. I'm not American. I'm Canadian. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Truly believe in what, where they're going with this. No, no, I, I think look, I, I, with this crash, you know, the recent crash I've faced, Steve, the growth yeah. stocks in a day, uh, in a bloody month, have gone down by fifty percent. You know, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You know, yeah. and and then I've seen Nasdaq, let's say QQQ, in last ten years, it has gone up by seven times. Like it's, that's like your money has become seven yeah. times. It's it's amazing. So I think just, just can you give it? I think this is probably covered calls. How do you play covered calls? What, what, how do they work? <laughs> what I'm trying to do is generate income off of the QQQ. So I'm selling the right to an option buyer. I'm selling him the ability to buy my stock at a particular price in the future if the ETF gets above that strike price. And so right now I'm short the 359 call on the QQQ. And so I sold that on Monday. It expires on Friday. And someone paid me $1,800 for that. For, <laughs> for, for how many option contract? That uh, was for 10, uh, 13. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a position. Like, it's not like, you know, it's, it's yeah. So you, you end up getting $1,800 when? Now. I already got it. And you don't you got that on Monday, but your your stocks can your QQ can can be exercised as well, right? Okay, so yeah, <laughs> it's true. They are uh, American style options. So what that means is any time between Monday and Friday, whoever bought them from me can exercise them early from me. You're right, but it's only five days. There's no way the guy's going to exercise it early. They would exercise it early if uh, there is a special dividend that gets declared mm -hmm. or a special, like, it, it'd be like, we're going to issue everyone who has a QQQ share, we're going to issue you uh, Intel stock issuance or something, like, some weird dividend that's not cash and they're like well mm. i gotta exercise the option in order to get those shares so that i get the dividend or so that i get the special issuance of whatever is going to happen but so because like right now qqq i open up the chart it's trading at 356 mm -hmm. so the option that i sold is 359 the guy's not going to exercise it early on me because yeah, if yeah, he does, he no has point. to pay me 350. Yeah. He has to pay me 359. Yeah. So I'd be like, yeah, go for it, man. 
but I still get that money. I still, the money that I earned on Monday or that he paid me, I still keep that no matter what, no matter what I keep that money. So on Friday, let's say QQQ is at three, is it let's, the happy case is that it's below 359. Let's say it stays at this 357, 358, 354. The thing expires worthless. Yeah. I keep all of that money. And on Saturday, the option is wiped from my account. The short position gets wiped. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Let's say it goes above. It's at 359, 340, something like that. Or uh, 360. So then what would happen is into the closing kind of half hour, 20 minutes of the market on Friday, I'll go back into the market and I'll buy back the option because I want to roll it forward. So I want to buy it back. But... You got to remember when I sold these, the uh, it was at three fifty two on Monday, wasn't it? So today it's at three fifty two. Yeah. So no. So yes. So yesterday it was at three fifty. So I sold when it, when the equity position was worth three hundred fifty dollars a share. I sold the 359 option for $1,800. And so for it to go above and into 360, 361, 362, the equity has increased by $10 a share. And so my equity position is stronger and then I can sell some of those shares to buy back that option. But I still keep that money that I made from the option sale. Mm -hmm. So where it gets really bad, though, is if the share surges up to like 370 or 380. Mm -hmm. And that's what the option buyer is really paying me for. They're like, what if on the off chance QQQ goes up to 380? And that is my upside risk for sure. And I've sold it away. I've sold my upside opportunity away for a dollar uh, a share on that one, a dollar 35, I think it was per share. Um, but I'm trying, I know the odds and the probability and yeah, it could happen. Stranger things have happened. So I think what the, I'm trying and, to do is just say, minimize I'm, your I'm taking a, I'm taking a calculated bet of like, okay, yeah. you, you, you pay me a dollar 35 now for the off chance that that thing takes off. Sure. I'll take it for a week. Yeah. Yeah. And, and nothing comes without risk. I mean, you're making money. I mean, there's no, yeah, exactly. And there's, there's, and it, that's another thing too, that I post every week, every day. Oh, well, not, not every day, but there's no such thing as free, free money. Hmm. Every investment carries risk. Covered calls is not a risk-free strategy. And everyone wants to focus on the upside risk. Like what if it takes off and goes to 370? Your, your biggest risk with covered calls isn't the upside. It's actually the downside. And so what are the two, you got to think from the option buyer standpoint, what are the two outcomes that he is like, whew, thank goodness I didn't buy the stock and thank goodness I just bought the option. It's that the stock took off to 370 or surged up high or the stock cratered to like 300. He's like, yeah, thanks, man. Good luck holding that bag. So those are the two risks that I face every week. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I think, look, I, it's a fascinating conversation. And Steve, I could have, and you know, I'm, I'm grateful the way you decoded things. You made it so simple. For, I, I hope Thanks, people man. understand and appreciate it. I mean, I do appreciate it myself that, you know, uh, especially crypto mining and covered calls I'm a little bit familiar with. But, you know, uh, thank you for uh, giving time and helping out what you're doing. I'm sure it will inspire uh, people to, to kind of uh, be on board and follow your journey. And, and benefit from it, Steve. So a big thank you to you uh, for your time. Mate. Yeah, and if you don't mind, if I could, so if you're interested in learning more about this, go on my Twitter profile, uh, Stephen Wealthy underscore. Yeah. And I have free guides for crypto mining on there. Like I said before, I don't even ask for your email. Mm -hmm. Just go grab the free ebook. It's there. I have a beginner's guide and an advanced mm -hmm. course guide on there. I also have in a paid Discord channel, hands-on coaching okay. Okay. to teach guys how to do crypto mining. And then I also have an ebook that
that is ten dollars for how to trade covered calls. I think those are two terrific sources of income. It's really changed my financial mm -hmm. independence and financial uh, situation. And it's an they're both incredible passive income streams. Awesome. And uh, I think guys who aren't and women, pe so people who aren't learning how to trade stock options against stock that you already have are missing out on an opportunity. There are speculators out there who will pay you either on the put side or the call side to hold the stock for them while they take a speculative position. And there is money to be made. And you can slowly ease in. You don't have to go full board. You can take a small position on stock that you already have. Do it a little bit. And as you get better and more experienced at the trade, you'll uncover an incredible passive income. <laughs>